Don Adams. Donald A. Adams became a special agent of the FBI, September 10, 62. His assignment of note included investigations of Joseph Adams Miltier and later in 64, the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. He was recently come forward with explosive information regarding the events surrounding JFK's assassination. And explosive is right. Here's a local TV station that an interview with him with the key clip. With the key clip. You can watch the whole thing up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We have links to the TV station where they play the FBI and others' intelligence audio of this individual talking about how he was going to kill Kennedy, where they were going to kill Kennedy, and then after they'd killed Kennedy, bragging to the intelligence officer how they did it. Here is that recording. Startling discovery was a tape recording captured by Miami intelligence officers November 9th, 1963, just weeks before Dallas. Miltier is talking to the informant, William Somerset. The FBI headquarters and Secret Service both had that tape within days. It should have stopped the president from traveling instantly. But they didn't. And he says he was jubilant. Bragging to Somerset, you thought I was kidding when I said he would be killed from a window with a high-powered rifle. Despite all of that, Miltier was never even mentioned in okay. the Warren Commission report. Now that's just one part of this, and I was with Jesse Ventura who's doing a JFK episode and his conspiracy theory. I was with him last week in Atlanta, Georgia, and then in Louisiana. I don't know if they have time, but I told them about Mr. Adams, and they'd already been investigating Miltier and had those tapes. But this is an agent who knew about it, tried to stop it, was blocked. And I think if they've got time, they might go try to talk to him. Uh, just amazing information. It's AdamsJFK.com's the website. Sir, I'm going to give you the floor as we go to break in about five, six minutes. But recap the basics of the case, and then let's get into more detail of why this is so important and why you're going public. Good to have you here, Don. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate that very much. You bet. You've got the floor. Just, or, I mean, recap the basic skeleton of this, okay? And 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 then we'll go into why this is so important. I mean, we have a bona fide cover up, clearly showing government involvement. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my investigation started on November thirteenth, nineteen sixty three. Uh, two weeks before the president was assassinated, uh, I received a call from the agent in charge uh, in the Dallas, I mean, in the Atlanta FBI office, and uh, he told me that he had a urgent matter that I needed to investigate, and that it has to be highly confidential. He told me that there had been a meeting that took place in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, just a week or two before the last of October of '63, and in that meeting there were four people who had come out of a very large meeting, and the four of them discussed the killing of President Kennedy. Joseph Miltier was one of them. Uh, his real good uh, school boyhood friend, William Somerset, was the second person, and there were two other people that were involved. In the discussion, uh, Miltier uh, tells, uh, tells Somerset that they have a plan in works already where the president, uh, they have already studied this, and the president had been leaving Homestead Air Force Base in Florida. Uh, he flies down uh, in Air Force One and then uh, gets into the limousine, uh, does not have the bubble top on it, it's open convertible, and he travels up Collins Avenue. Now, in 1963, there was no, palm, I mean, there was no buildings or anything in that area. It was just nothing but palm trees. So he travels up Collins Avenue, goes north, to Palm Beach and then goes to the Kennedy compound, uh, which they lived at for a number of years prior to. And he visits and then uh, returns back to Washington uh, at the end of the weekend. Uh, they said that what they planned to do was one of the four in that group was a former uh, sniper in the Second World War. And, uh, and he was willing to give his life to uh, get up into the palm tree, and these were tall palm trees, to get up in a palm tree, secrete himself up there, and then as the motorcade passed by, he would shoot the president in the back of the car, knowing that he was going to be probably killed or wounded, and he was willing to do that because he believed that much in, in the cause. Uh, if that failed, then the second portion of it was they had a uh, an apartment or a office building 
in Washington, D.C., across just behind Lafayette Park and across from the White House. And they had purchased a heavy tri- a duty tripod and a heavy um, uh, weapon, and they were going to shoot the president when he came out onto the portico, <laughs> excuse me, or walked the grounds of the White House. As a result of that, uh, this was their plan, and this is what they were going to do. The agent in charge told me that he wanted me to do a full background investigation on Miltier as quickly as I possibly could. Miltier lived in Quitman, Georgia. He was uh, very, very close to a girl by the name of C.C. Cofield, who lived in Valdosta, Georgia, who was a prostitute. And Miltier spent uh, more time with her than he did in, in his Valdosta home. I mean, his equipment home is more in Valdosta with her. So anyway, as a result of it, uh, in talking to the boss, uh, he told me to hold it very confidential. And I told him, I said, well, I'm going to need help on this. I said, I don't know that town too well, and I would like to talk with the chief of police, Bill Elliott, who I worked a couple of cases with, and I have trusted him. And he said, no. You're not going to talk to anybody. All right, stay there. Don Adams, retired FBI agent. Uh, the circle is now complete. With this information, it confirms everything that E. Howard Hunt has said. It confirms all the other bona fide 40-plus years of documented facts that we have. We'll be right back with Don Adams. Stay with us. We're going right back to retired FBI agent Don Adams. And I know you're like, hey... 80 plus or even higher percentage of Americans know that the government was involved killing Kennedy. So why are we talking about it? Because if they can get away with that lie, they can get away with anything. And it's just like Bruce Willis told Vanity Fair after he saw some of my documentaries. He said, look, the people that killed Kennedy are still running this country. It's like Ron Paul has said, we've had a coup in this nation. I've got mainstream news articles about British troops running heroin. Of course they run the heroin. I've got Fox News admitting our troops grow the opium in Afghanistan. This is a lawless criminal government at the top, and it's compartmentalized where most people don't know. Now, Don Adams, you had left off with, you were trying to get the aid of a police chief, but you were told no by the FBI. This guy's telling people at meetings with FBI informants there, recording him, that we're going to kill him with a high-powered rifle. Uh, please continue. Okay. Uh I, I finally got approval from him. I, I persisted, and I, I got approval and told him that we can accomplish a lot in a short period of time. Uh, Bill Elliott and I went out, and we did a, uh, an enormous amount of work in four or five days. We, we went to the credit bureau, police department, sheriff's offices, to the schools, to different organizations, employment bureaus. I mean, you name it, we went to it. Anything that he would have a possible connection with to get as much data as we possibly could. Uh, Chief Elliott tells me uh, that on Saturday mornings, Miltier goes out and stands on the, on the corner, and the streets at that time were just dirt streets in, in uh, equipment. He stands on the corner in equipment, Georgia, every Saturday, and he passes out hate literature that he mimographs and copies. And there are uh, not direct threats, but implied threats as to his feelings towards the president, the attorney general, and so on. So on a Saturday, I went and I... Uh, wore old clothes and that, and I went up to him and uh, obtained from him a, a large amount of material, and he was just very anxious to give it to me and try to get as much out to me as he could. I took that material plus all the other information that I had obtained from him, and I took it uh, back to my house and then to the office, and I worked late through the night, uh, and I com- compiled a complete report on this. I subsequently then took the report to Atlanta and gave it to the special agent in charge because this request for us to do this investigation came from the Secret Service to us because they didn't have an agent in, in Thomasville. So as a result of it, I gave it to the SAC. He then in turn gave it to the special agent in charge of the uh, Secret Service, and and I was I was finished with it. And that was uh, a couple of days before the 22nd. And on the 22nd at 1230, my partner and I were in a car. And we pulled up alongside a bus, and the bus driver said, did you hear what happened in Dallas? And my partner, who was on the right side, said, no, he had not. And he said, uh, they just shot the president in Dallas. And my heart dropped right down through the floorboard. 